everybody so i'm back with another word from the lord and the lord gave me this on saturday january 13th 2024 at 5 21 a.m and he led me to joel and it's called the nations will be judged <laughs> help me lord okay so here we go Joel chapter 3 starting at number 1 it says behold in those days and at that time when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and I was like God what do you mean bring us down to Jehoshaphat and then he said look up what that word means so I looked it up and it means Yahweh is judge has judged and he said judgment so he'll bring us down so what he's saying is I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of judgment then I will enter so then I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my inheritance Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and they have divided up my land and then three says they have also cast lots for my people trade a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink moreover what are you to me O Tyre Sidon and all the regions of Philistinia are you rendering me a recompense but if you do recompense me swiftly and speedingly I will return your recompense on your head since you have taken my silver and my gold brought my precious treasures to your temples and so he was letting me know he's talking about the church and so he's saying that since you have taken my silver so what belongs to him and brought them into the temples built by man's hands and when I was talking to him about it earlier because I knew I was going to record this he reminded me of the Ark of the Covenant <laughs> and so first Samuel's uh, chapter 5 and we are going to start on 2 <laughs> oh hold on well should I start one? The Philistine took the Ark of Ebony. Well, okay, we'll start at one. Now the Philistine took the Ark of God, the Ark of God, and brought it to Ebenezer, to Ashad. Then the Philistines took the Ark of God, I mean Ark of God, and brought it to the house of Dagon, and set it by Dagon. When the Ashadites uh, Ashadites arose early the next morning behold Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the before the ark of the Lord so they took Dagon and set him in his place again but when they arose early the next morning behold Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the of the Lord and the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hand were cut off of the uh, threshold only the trunk of Dagon was left to him therefore neither the priest of Dagon nor all who entered Dagon's house thread on the threshold of Dagon and Ashrod to this day it says now the hand of the Lord was heavy on the Ashadites and he ravaged them and smote them with tumors both Ashad and its territory when the man of Ashar saw it it was so they said the ark of the the ark of God of Israel must not remain with us for his hand is severe on us and on Dagon Dagon our God and that's a lowercase g so the Philistines tried to steal and take the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant of God, into their temple, their area, their territory. And when they had brought it and they had their idol built up, which was Dagon, that's who they worship, the Lord in the Ark of the Covenant of God basically destroyed that. And you guys, I thought it was funny because it said that the Dagon was on his face, meaning he bowed down to God. Like God says, every knee shall bow. Even their idols will fall. Mm. 
Mm, that is powerful. Woo. So they brought the silver. Okay, he said brought my silver and my gold into their uh, in my precious treasures to your temples. Then he said and sold the son of Judah in Jerusalem to the Greeks. So these are the people who were supposed to be next up in line, called to God, uh, called to take on these positions in these churches and in these places. But these um, leaders had them basically. God, what's the word? I'm, I'm thinking convert into what it was that they were doing in order to have a space or a leadership role or whatever position it was that God was initially calling them to, but that's not how God was gonna get them. And because of this fear-based stuff and because of these leaders, they try to get you to, I'm just gonna say it, they do a lot of blackmailing to hold you in order for you to even be in the position. That way, if you ever decide that you wanna go and tell their secrets or expose them, they have stuff on you. You get what I'm saying? And so what they're doing is God was calling these people and they knew God, God was on them. But what they did was they ended up causing perversion and um, having them convert and conform to their ways in order to get that position. So as Satan does, like in Luke 4, right, right before Jesus was getting ready to go out into the land and become everything that God said, that he would when he was being tempted satan came and showed him all these things i'll offer you all these things i'll give you if you just bow down and worship me so you know a lot of times when we are being thrusted or pushed into position even just in pregnancy right and you have these contractions there's a lot of things going on a lot of pain and suffering in a sense right travailing and it's this this thing that happens that is just like right before the beauty comes right right before the breakthrough it's a lot of just a lot going on and so before you can get to the other side satan wants to hurry up and present something to them or to these people to snatch them before god um before they actually do the will of god and blossom anyways because as we know after jesus had finishes 40 days 40 night it's like right when he went out it said like the fame of jesus went out into the land and so and then as we know he becomes so successful and and famous right because even now to this day we are still calling on his name and there's so many of us building his legacy where he's still being carried on right and so that's Satan. So he sees the light on these children in these churches. And so he wants to come in and snatch them up. And usually when they're insecure and the person isn't fully, you know, in um, intimacy with God, they, they don't know like if this is really what it is. And they want people to see them that they're willing to conform because they think that this person is the only one who can, um, make this thing that God had said happen for them, right? But the Bible says, and God says, no man will take his glory. And so you, we, we got to separate from this man stuff. You know, we ought to obey God rather than man. Okay, Acts, what is it, 529? And so now it goes on and it says, okay, six i'm gonna just reread it it said and sold the sons of judah in jerusalem to the greek churches and well it says greeks but god was letting me know that's churches in order to remove them far from their territories behold i am going to arouse them from the place where you have sold them and return your recompense on your head so god is going to redeem those people who have been manipulated and forced into these positions by betraying God in a sense and God knows their heart is pure and they thought that was the way God had wanted it done in a lot of, like I'm saying out of fear but God knows their heart so he's going to come for them okay it says also I will sell your sons and so this is what God's saying because you stole my sons you stole my children and you've done these things to them now I am going to recompense you and so in like it says eight and then it says also i will sell your sons and then he took me to isaiah 43 and 4 it says since you are precious in my sight since you are honored and i love you i will give other men in your place and other people in exchange for your life do not fear for i am with you i will bring you 
I will bring your offsprings from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the wrath, no, I will say to the north, give them up and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and he's also saying strayed the ones that strayed so bring them from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth everyone who is called by my name and he's saying his children and whom i have created for my glory meaning the marked ones the elect the chosen ones the one that he specifically called up for his glory whom i have found even whom i have made and then it says oh i think or did i put 10 i don't know it says and understand that i am he and your daughters into the hand of the sons of judah and they will sell them to the Sabim, to a distant nation for the lord has spoken proclaim this among the nation prepare prepare a war rouse the mighty men let all the soldiers draw near let them come up beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears let the weak say i am a mighty man hasten and come all your all you surrounding nations and gather yourselves there bring down O lord your mighty ones let the nations be aroused and come up to the valley of jehoshaphat and then he said again yahweh is judge has judged for there i will sit to judge all the surrounding nations those who are against him and his children is what he's saying put in the oh, sickles maybe it's a little sloppy but i think that's it but it's 13 if you want to read it <laughs> for the harvest is ripe come thread for the wine press is full the vats overflow for their wickedness is great multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision far for the day of the lord is near in the valley of decision the lord roars from zion and utters his voice from jerusalem and the heavens and the earth tremble but the lord is a refuge for his people and a stronghold to his sons of israel then you will know that i am the lord your god dwelling in zion my holy mountain so jerusalem will be holy and strangers will pass through no more then he took me to isaiah 57 it says evil leaders rebuked but come here you sons of a sorcerer and he's saying sons of satan of whom were of whom were you worried and fearful when you lay when you lied and did not remember me nor give me a thought was i not silent even for a long time so you do not fear me so he's saying because he has been silent, you don't fear him as in you think he doesn't see things because he has not <laughs> recompensed on your head, right? In 12, it says, I will declare your righteousness and your deeds, but they will not profit you. When you cry out, let your collections of idols deliver you, but the wind will carry all of them up and a breath will take them away. But he who but he who takes refuge in me will inherit the land and will possess my holy mountains. And that's Saturday, January 13, 2024, 626 a.m. Then on Monday, January 15, 2024, at 5 2 a.m., he took me to 2 Chronicles 18 and 16. It says, So he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep which have no shepherd and the lord said these have no masters let each of them return to his house in peace so because there's a great scattering coming a lot of god's sheep aren't gonna know where to go since god is destroying these churches built by man's hands and a lot of them are going to be scattered and not knowing where to go and god is saying to his children that when it all breaks and when it all scatters you and, and, and it says scattered on the mountain like sheep which have no shepherds because you're not gonna know what to do when this breaks out because you thought your pastor was good or you knew the truth but you just ignored it and carried on because you felt it wasn't your business but it is but anyway that's another story 
And so it says, and the Lord said, these have no master, right? The the idol you were serving or the pastor, I'll say the pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, the apostle, what am I missing? Preacher, teachers, yeah, the leaders, we'll say the leaders, even people who were just we'll just go with leaders it says these have no master let because you're free now so it says let each of them return to his house in peace and so as god breaks the, everything up and scatters everything there's going to be this grace period and that is for you if you have not already to hurry up and quickly turn to God and make God your master because there is only God and Satan. There's no in-between. Lukewarm, remember, as I always say, is still choosing Satan. And so you will get to pick. Do you want to go go on and break from these people God is trying to separate you from or these idols and choose him? Or are you going to want to go back and continue to follow Satan and whoever it is that Satan has lined up? So it's going to be up to you. Again, choose this day whom you will serve. And that is the word of the Lord. All right, you guys. Have a beautiful and blessed day. And just know... God is moving and he's moving swiftly. Judgment is here. Exposure is here. God is exposing the wicked. God is exposing the hands of our enemies, which are his enemies. And, you know, God has said earlier to me in 2023 that three things were getting ready to happen. And he said exposure, destruction, and what was the last one, God? Exposure, destruction, oh, yeah, and rebuilding. <laughs> Thank you, God. And so he's exposing everything. And he gave it to me like a, like a house, right? When there's a problem in the house, like think about renovating and you're lifting things, right? And it's a big problem on the foundation. You have to crack everything and remove everything, tear down everything, right? Expose what the issue is, right? And destroy it. And then after you destroy it, right? You clean it up and all these things. And that's part of the rebuilding, the rebuilding of the temple. So we're going to watch everything be exposed, everything be destroyed because he has to uproot the foundation and fix the foundation, and what it is that we're anchored in and then he's going to rebuild his temple and that is going to be the order of it but okay now i'm out of here have a beautiful and blessed day you guys bye